Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your glory, your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Glory to God in the hearts, and, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom. You know necessities before we ask, and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness, and mercifully give us those things for which for our unworthiness we dare not, and for our blindness we cannot ask. The worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. When David, the king, was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be prince over my people, Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place, and be disturbed no more and evildoers shall afflict them no more, as formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring after you, who shall come forth from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
say together Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Remember that at one time you gentle Gentiles by birth called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall that is the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with, his, with its commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near. For through him, both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints, and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. The word of the Lord. Thanks for being here.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all towns and, arri and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came unto land at the Gesenerate and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mass to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have you ever noticed that different people have different attitudes toward work? I heard about a congregation that had the same rector for many years. He retired, and then they called a new young priest who had new ideas and church leadership. The vestry decided to hire a part-time person to care for the church's shrubbery. Quote, I'll have you know that the vestry members that our former rector always took care of the church's shrubbery for himself. I'm aware of that, said the young priest, but I called him and he doesn't want to do it anymore. <laughs> and neither do I. Different people have different ideas about work. A lazy clerk fiddled around while his right boss burned. You're the most useless person I ever saw, said the boss, flaring. You don't do an hour's work in a month. Tell me one single way the firm benefits from employing you. Well, the clerk pondered about it for a moment, and then he said, well, when I go on vacation, there's no extra work thrown in on others. <laughs> different people have different ideas about 
work. A kid and his mom are going to Publix, putting special items in shopping cart. The boy then came over and said, hey mom, this looks pretty good. Well, she took it the box, looked it over and said, honey, put it back on the shelf. If I would have bought it, I'd have to mix it, work it, cook it, no thanks. Okay, there are different attitudes toward work. But I want to begin this morning by making one thing clear. You and I have a religious responsibility to goof off from time to time. It's true. That may sound like a strange comment from the pulpit. But it's true. We have a responsibility to take time to rest and relax. God did not create us to be buzzy bees all the time. That is a truth incorporated in the very heart of the Judeo-Christian tradition with the idea of the Sabbath. At the heart of the Ten Commandments, we read, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. And what does that mean? The tradition of the Sabbath in the scriptures is too rich to boil down to a simple sermon. But let's consider a couple of truths one of which can often be ignored. The Sabbath is to be a day of rest. This truth is based on the creation story. God worked six days and rested on the seventh. God said we are to rest one day in seven. Our Jewish and Seventh-day Adventist friends celebrate Saturday as the Sabbath. Most Christians and we celebrate Sunday to honor of Christ's resurrection. The Sabbath is intended to be a day of rest. Secondly, we need to note that the Sabbath was created for our benefit. That is the truth about the Sabbath that is often ignored. The Sabbath was not created for God. It was created for us. That is a point that Jesus most emphatically put in Mark's Gospel, where Joseph and his disciples were going through the grain fields, and the disciples began plucking heads of grain. They were hungry, but this was the Sabbath, and plucking grain was considered work. The Pharisees brought this transgression to Jesus' attention. Jesus answered with a biblical precedent set by King David, who then said, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. The point is this. You and I need one day a week in which we do no work. None. Zilch. God means for us to have one day when we can worship, visit friends, relatives, have a nap, and do whatever it is to re 
refresh and rekindle our minds, our bodies, our spirits. We need one day a week for goofing off. That is our religious responsibility. That is the first thing that we need to see. But also, goofing off is not only a religious responsibility, it is a key to successful life. Good old Benjamin Franklin was history's greatest source of the early to bed, early to rise. But he himself liked to stay up late playing chess and chatting with his friends. But also, Ben Franklin whiled away the hours by tinkering with things like kites, and bottles, and keys, and stoves. In fact, after introducing the first bath truck, which he found built in 1790, Franklin spent many hours inside of his own bathtub, soaking, reading. Nobody was ever more committed to his work than Jesus of Nazareth. So much was at stake, and there was so little time. Yet Jesus said to his disciples no more than one occasion, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. Sometimes it did not work out as Jesus planned. Often the crowds would not let him alone. In the gospel we hear today, there was a large group of people rushing to see Jesus. And Jesus had compassion, reaching out to heal those who were hurting. Even so, Mark's gospel reminds that Jesus needed a time, a time to rest and relax. So we also need a time of fellowship with God. Often when Jesus took his disciples off by themselves, it was for season of prayer. Jesus knew that we not only need to refresh our bodies and to refresh our minds, but we also need to refresh our spirits as well. That's why the Sabbath was always a time for a time of worship as well as a time for rest. One more thing. Remember the, the bishop came a few months ago? After this church was all over with, he came out to us in the sacristy and said, you know, St. Andrews is a quiet place. This is a time where I can relax, where I can say my prayers. Maybe that's what all the people who are here do the same. So, have your time. Go forward. Relax. And relax and be in Christ's name. Please stand and join with me in the words of the Nicene Creed. The Nicene Creed is found on page 8 in the bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth. All that we beseech and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. And the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. To the Father and the Son is worshipped by God. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the dead. Life the prayers of the people found on page 9 of the bulletin. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all the reference for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation, especially the people of Ukraine, Israel, and Gaza. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For yours is the majesty, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory now and forever. Amen. Let's confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry for the hungry repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. And we delight in your will and walk in your ways. The glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen your all goodness by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
couple of things to mention. That is, uh, one, that uh, uh, Dr. Hare is sick. Uh, he's not with us today, but glad that Coleman is here, and we thank you for that. Uh, the rector and the Reese's, of course, are off to Colorado Springs. Uh, they'll be back later on. Check a couple of things in the bulletin of the adult education class on page 18. The uh, titles are on that. And also Vacation Bible School, which is coming up in August. I mentioned that our good friend, Ed Rich, Father Ed Rich, is here as our celebrant today. And uh, we've worked together for a long many time. years. A long time. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. Glad to do it. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name, bring offerings and come into his courts.
Our service continues Eucharistic Prayer C. Eucharistic Prayer C in your Book of Common Prayer begins on page 369. The Lord be with you. Also Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, who are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses. In this fragile earth, our island home. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made for us the rulers of creation. We turned against you and betrayed your trust. And we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again, you called us to return to the prophets and sages revealed your righteous law. In the fullness of time, you sent your only son, one of a woman, to fulfill the law that went for us the way of freedom and peace. And therefore, we praise you, joining our journey to heavenly chorus with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, but all those of every generation who look to you in and hope, proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna and Christ. Blessed is he who cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. So, Father, we have been redeemed by him, made a new people by water and the Spirit. Now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit. Be for your people the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On night he was betrayed, he took the bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave us his friends and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of new covenant, which is shed for you and for many the forgiveness of sins. And if you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we, we celebrate his death and resurrection. We wait for the day of his time. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. That the grace of Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us as the of the Accept these prayers and praise of Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, by whom, with you, and with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor and glory and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now as our Savior called us, Christ has taught us we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, 
and would be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, wherever and ever. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us eat the Hallelujah. The Lamb of God, to take us away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. And the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. The Lamb of God, to take away the sins of the world. Grant us The gifts of God, the people of God. Take the words that Christ died for you, and fill them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. body of Christ, the of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread 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 of heaven. 
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as being men of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. You have fed us with spiritual food, the sacrament of his body and love. Send us now to our lives and grant us strength and courage, love and service. Peace of God, which passes understanding, keep your hearts and minds. The knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.